Hey guys, welcome to my shop. Today I'm going to show you how I made this end green cutting board. It's made out of maple and these accent pieces are made out of walnut. The wood I use for this build is this reclaimed maple you see stacked up behind me. It was riddled with nails and screws and old caulk so it took quite a bit to mill it down to be able to use it but it ended up turning out pretty good. Um, this cutting board is not your average cutting board. It's really beefy, heavy. Um, our length here is 32 and a half inches. Um, our measurement here is 18 and a half inches and our overall thickness is two and a quarter inches. This uh, cutting board I made for some good friends of ours as a Christmas gift and I put a lot of time and effort into this one and I hope they really like it and I hope you like the video. Alright, so the first thing to do is to get rid of all the old nails in these eight quarter trim pieces. Then it's over to the miter saw to cut a clean 90 degree end on these boards. Here I'm setting up a stop block so that I can easily and accurately cut this stock to the same length. Here I am ripping these boards for two reasons. One is that I need to get rid of the section that had the nails, and the other is to get them to a width that will fit on my jointer. Here I am truing up two sides to every piece of this wood on the jointer. Now that I have one perfectly flat surface from the jointer, I can take these pieces over to the planer to get them to the right thickness and also make them perfectly parallel. Here I am placing the jointed edge against the table saw fence and ripping everything to the final dimensions that they will be for the first glue up. Now that I have all the pieces cut, I can lay them out and move them around to make sure I have heartwood to heartwood and sapwood to sapwood. Doing this will ensure that the board stays structurally sound for years and years to come. Also I am moving pieces around to get the color contrast that looks the best to the eye. Now it's time to glue them all together.
Once the glue dries overnight, it is time to remove the clamps and scrape all of the glue squeeze out off of the board. During glue up there will be some shifting and you will need to cut the edge clean again. This is easily done on a cross cut sled but this panel is way too massive for mine. So I'm screwing a straight edge onto the board making sure it's square to the parallel pieces so that I can take it to the table saw. The ends of the board will be cut off later so I'm not worried about the screw holes. Now I am cutting the board into more manageable pieces that I can remill to be flat and true again. Here I am jointing side grain, but with very shallow passes I didn't receive any tear out. I don't however trust my planer to do the same, so once these are flattened on the joiner I will take these to the drum sander to get them to the final thickness. Right here I'm making sure that my table saw blade is at a perfect 90 so that I can cut the final strips of the cutting board. Now it's time for the final glue up. This time I clamp a fence to the table to aid in getting everything lined up. This is where I flip the pieces on end to have the end grain facing up. I also alternated every other piece to give the board the cool looking pattern. Unlike the last glue up, I'm going to use large calls to make sure this glue up is as flat as possible. A rubber mallet works great to break the calls free. Now that the glue has dried overnight, it's time to scrape all of the glue squeeze out off again. Now we can go over to the drum sander to get this board to its final thickness. This took way more passes than shown here, but it did a great job with this larger than average cutting board. Next I take it over to the table saw to clean up all four edges. When you don't have a large bench vise, you have to improvise. I'm clamping it in this orientation in order to cut handles into it. If you want to see how I made this router jig, I will leave a link right here and also a link in the description. Now I clean everything up with a roundover bit on the palm router. Then for the tedious task of sanding, off camera I sanded the whole thing down to a 220 grit. I cleaned the handle up with the sanding drum on the Dremel. Now for the best part, the finish. Here I'm using food safe mineral oil. Applying it liberally because we want the whole board to be impregnated with oil. This will take a few times of doing this to both sides. Well, there it is guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. 
If you have any questions about this build or suggestions on what I should make with all this maple, please leave me a comment below. And please subscribe. I'll be uploading some more woodworking videos and DIY videos. And I'll catch you on the next one.